Hi, it's Amy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. Today we're going to go over the steps of painting a room and the room that we'll be painting is our dining room. I believe the most important step is the prep work. And here are two of our most favorite products for doing a great prep job. The first is the dry deck spackling and the second is the frog tape, which I'll talk about a little later. So what I like about this dry deck spackling is that it's actually pink and then it goes on pink and then it dries white. So there's no guesswork and when you can paint it and what we like to do because it dries out very quickly is just to take an old cup and then just fill a little bit in here with your spackling knife and then just use that to spackle any small holes. And so what I have did is go around, take all the switch plates and the outlet plates take them off and then I go ahead and just screw in the little screws, leave them there so you don't lose them. And then here, my husband has filled the holes where the curtain rods used to be. They are turning white and then the center is pink so it's drying from the outside in. And so he's went around and any like little dings in our walls, he's went ahead and filled those like we had a few little areas here that needed to be filled and then what we'll do is just lightly sand it and then we will wipe down the walls before we start to paint. Here is that green tape that I'll be using and it is the multi-purpose frog tape and it does a great job of keeping the line very straight. You can move a lot quicker and two, you don't have any bleed through. Okay, so I have finished all of the taping and it looks pretty bad around the bottom here and that's just because I didn't want to use that thick a tape and so I just kind of half the tape as I was pulling it and so it really looks like choppy and chewed off but it will work it's got the straight edge against the wall so and then all of around the windows I don't tape it at the top of the windows because I can cut in pretty well I just want to save a little bit of tape that way and so we've got all that done I did see a place over here where I had put the spackle and it still has like an indent so I need to go and repair that before we start painting and well before we sand so I'll get a little bit of that fill that hole and that'll be that for the taping Here's Nyla. She was playing hide and seek with Elena. Elena's over there. So go hide. We'll try to do it again. Stay, Nyla. Stay. 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 Whenever you're ready. Did you hear? Where'd she go? She loves this game. Moko does too. She's really good at it. Oh. Where'd she go? Just say woo. -hoo. Where'd she go? Yeah. <gasps> oh, she found you! It's so cute because Moko usually can tell like right off where you are, and then Hi. Nyla. Hi. Nyla will uh, follow and that little romping there that is a daily occurrence several times a day okay 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 so do you have this problem with your dogs the older one just isn't having it hey hey easy easy say hi guys hi moko moko hi can you speak moko speak moko speak Moko, Nyla, speak. Come on, speak. Come on, speak. Come on. Good girl. Woo Good girl. Moko, speak. Moko, speak. Come on. Good girl. I did good girl. Here's a treat. <laughs> 
All right, so that's a little doggy cam. <laughs> Getting back to painting, I did want to mention here that maybe add a step 1B. If you haven't already caulked your baseboards, go ahead and do this step before you move on to the taping. That's a super important way to get that professional look. This is what it looked like before caulking and this is what it will look like after with the caulk. I'm pretty much finished with the prep work for tonight, so I thought I'd just bring you along, show you what we're doing for dinner, plus give you an idea of how my typical evening cleanup looks like, and then we'll be ready to start again tomorrow um, and actually get some paint on the walls. So Scott's out here grilling some chicken and checking it with the uh, meat thermometer to make sure that it's safe and won't kill us. And as you see, it's 190 degrees. I think we're safe. I know that I haven't been who I was. I am supposed to be the one you can trust. I feel so useless because I let you down. I hope there's some way I can make it all right. Because I know that you deserve much more than this. So I have baked potatoes in the microwave. And then we have some broccoli and then just some mixed veggies. What we'll have for dinner. Pan over here, and as you see, there's those little finger puzzles that I was talking about, and they're hard at work trying to figure them out because they had kind of forgot how to do them. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and sit down and have our Friday night dinner. Now it's time to clean up after dinner, get the kitchen back in order so that tomorrow when we wake up, everything is in its place and then we can really concentrate on getting our dining room painted and back to normal. I'm not sure if you feel the same way as me, but if I have a cluttered area, I just can't seem to function and think clearly. So this is super important to me is to get everything back in its place. So of course all the dirty dishes need to be put up and so I usually have everyone put their own plate and stuff in the dishwasher and then they usually exit and then I'm able to then finish up cleaning the kitchen and putting away all the things that were in its place. If there's only one thing that I can do to clean up my kitchen after dinner, that would be to clean out my sink. And so here, I'm just using the Mrs. Meyers Honeysuckle Scent Dish Soap, and I'm just cleaning it out, getting rid of all the dirt and crumbs that have accumulated throughout the day. And so each morning, I love coming down to a freshly clean sink. Also, at this time, I like to put out a new dish rag and dish towel so that it is germ-free in the morning. The 
second place I like to clean if I have time is going to be the stove top and here I'm using a degreaser which is just rubbing alcohol and I found that during this coronavirus outbreak that spraying down my counters is also uh, with this isopropyl alcohol is actually killing the virus as well as really degreasing and shining the countertops so I really love that this is a great alternative to some of the more expensive products that you buy. Here I'm just adding back our place setting to the table and then also wiping down the table with just some dish soap and wiping off those crumbs and getting the table ready for tomorrow is super important as well. Okay guys, well now that I've finished cleaning up the kitchen, uh, the family's all set to watch um, a couple of shows on TV or a movie and so we will be back tomorrow morning bright and early to start the painting process. So putting down drop cloth is pretty important because you don't want to destroy your surfaces. If it was a perfect world, we would just move everything into another room, but of course we can't. Finally, we're to the point where we can start painting. We find that painting the ceiling first, then the walls, provides the best results. So as you can see, I'm cutting in on the ceiling and I'm going down on the wall about a fourth of an inch to an eighth of an inch and when we use our cut-in tool for the wall it'll make a perfect straight line. Now Scott does a great job at sanding all of the areas that we spackled and what he's using is just a sanding block and then he just goes over it until he can no longer feel any type of divot or raised area with his finger. This process is pretty time consuming as well as precise. So while he's doing that, I'm going ahead and trimming out the ceiling so that when I'm done with that, he'll be ready to roll the ceiling. When we go out, it's always fun. You pick me up for nine it's going to be on a blooper. <laughs> so what we like to do between coats is to take our brush and put it in a Ziploc baggie and then stick that in the refrigerator and that will save you from having to clean your brush as many times and then you can do your touch-ups for your second coat. Yeah, you're to show you the type of roller that we're using so we got it in the contractor series it was from Sherwin Williams and it's the 3 8 nap
So the paint that we are using is from Lowe's. It's the Valspar Signature Paint and it's actually for walls. We do not like any ceiling paint. It doesn't spread well and its coverage is terrible. So we found that this paint does the best. It's ultra white and it's flat. It does have a, a little bit of a sheen once it dries, but very minimal. This paint is also very thick and so that helps to reduce any type of splatters and splashes when you're rolling on the ceiling. So keep that in mind, that is very important. For me, it is super calming and satisfying to watch him paint, so I'm just going to go ahead and let you do just that. I just take a lightly damp rag and wipe over the walls so that I remove any of the dust from the sanding that we had previously done. Here I'm showing how we prevent the buildup of paint along the rim of the paint can. What I do is just take a nail and just drive a few holes so that when you pour the paint that excess around the rim will go back into the can instead of dripping down the side. Because we've taped, it makes the cutting in process super quick. And you see there we use um, a little rubber made container to store our extra paint and then it's really nice to carry along with you when you are cutting in. On the lid, I just take painter's tape and a black sharpie and put the color of the paint that is in the container and then it's good to go. So this is a little edger we're going to use for the ceiling and uh, you've got to make sure that uh, you don't get paint on the little rollers uh, so just be patient with it uh, you got to try and you will mess up a couple times uh, but once you get the hang of it it's pretty easy so you want to just dip it in here and I kind of front load it more so get more on the top part of it Typically, he tries to go one direction, but as he starts, he usually moves back and forth and then continues in a straight line in one direction. This tool is amazing and it provides such a professional look at the cut in line at the ceiling. So I think it is well worth it. So the paint that we are using is from Sherwin-Williams and it is the color shiitake. It is in the duration paint line and it is also a satin finish. So here is the lid to the paint can if you want to just go ahead and screenshot that and take it to your local Sherwin-Williams if you want to give that color a try. Like it is 
If you stuck with me for this far into the video, I just wanted to say thank you. And if you're new to my channel and enjoy what you've seen so far, I just ask that you hit that subscribe button and come back and see more. You scare me. <laughs> it was Nyla. You scared me, Dad. Something. Oh. Yes, I know. You scared me. You scared me when you called me. She called me. Yeah. What did you think it was? I had no idea. I was just like, oh. finished our first coat of paint on the walls and right now we're just going to cover the paint tray with some glad pressing seal we wish we would have had saran wrap and in about four two to four hours depending on how quick it dries we can do the final coat because it will need two coats So here's the end results of our freshly painted room. I hope that you've enjoyed watching and coming along with us during our weekend painting project. I hope that I've given you the steps that you can take to get professional looking results in your home. Thanks again so much for watching. I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you back here next time on Simply Our Home. Bye!